We have come to the end of the age of information. Now we're in the age of intelligence. What next? What kind of technologies would you need to realize the potential of shared intelligence? You know, I've always thought of AI as more profound than fire or electricity or anything that we have done in the past. You know, people talk about AGI, right? Artificial General Intelligence. Do you think in 10 years from now we are there? I would say that we are less than three years from that point. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Your company is the maker of Chat GPT, which has taken the world by storm. This can help people create, help people learn, help people do all these different tasks. Whether you think artificial intelligence will save the world or end it, you have Jeffrey Hinton to thank. Hinton has been called the godfather of AI. Some of his research led to chatbots like Google's Bard. I don't know what to make of this. Future versions go from 140 IQ equivalent to 150 to 180. And then at 180, we'll be curing cancer and developing warp drive and doing all kinds of stuff. So let's take five years, 2028. What does the world look like? In the next five years, the frontier model companies, those of us at the very cutting edge who are training the very largest AI models, are going to train models that are over a thousand times larger than what you currently see today. You can very predictably scale up AI training and get increasingly capable models, often with new surprising capabilities. Every single interest in AI is based on this idea. We have a very good idea of sort of roughly what it's doing. But as soon as it gets really complicated, we don't actually know what's going on any more than we know what's going on in your brain. The technology has sparked a lot of fear over job losses, threats to privacy, and its potential for misuse. I just dropped like a 150 milligram edible, and uh, I'm feeling fucking zooted. There are concerns like disinformation, which we're seeing in the 2024 election. Let's not forget their massive carbon footprint. Can you summarize the main points in the blog post? Reasons why AI is likely to kill all of us. First time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die. We need a wake up call here. We have a perfect storm of corporate irresponsibility, widespread adoption of these new tools, a lack of regulation, and a huge number of unknowns. 50% of AI researchers believe there's a 10% or greater chance that humans go extinct from our inability to control AI. Extreme scale AI models are so expensive to train. We already see the concentration of power. Last week, the veteran AI developer Jeffrey Hinton announced that he'd resigned from Google, saying he regrets his work. It'll allow authoritarian leaders to manipulate their electorates, things like that. Welcome back. Let's check in with Eamon Javers on Capitol Hill today as the meeting with tech executives on AI has now wrapped. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. This is the hardest thing that I think we have ever undertaken. It is adopted. Congratulations. EU countries agreed to a landmark deal to regulate artificial intelligence. I'm about to sign an executive order that is the most significant action any government has ever taken on AI safety, security, and trust. Are we going too hard after language-based general intelligent AI, as opposed to, to building things that actually create scientific breakthroughs? It's hard for us when something's really good at a few things. When we see that, we think, oh, it must be good at everything. But it has no model of the world, no common sense. So when we see something that can manipulate language, we assume that entity will have the same type of intelligence as humans. But it's just not true. Those systems are incredibly stupid. And this multi-step reasoning that humans are very good at, uh, AI can't reason yet. If you want superhuman performance, you need some form of reasoning. The step forward to getting into an AGI is you just kind of like continue maxing large language models. Or is there another breakthrough that I, I think we need another breakthrough. If you look at machine learning and you just look at the trajectory, it's all a trajectory measured in terms of big data or how many billions of parameters can your large language model handle. That's exactly the wrong direction. Carl Friston, one of the greatest neuroscientists in history, 
cited over 245,000 times, known for the free energy principle for action and perception. The principles of understanding what the brain does and how it does it proved to be so simple and so powerful that they can be applied as a, an organizing principle for any system that shows the characteristics of life. Let's consider a new path for our future. One that goes beyond machines and algorithms, grounded in physics and based on our deepest understanding of biological intelligence. A path that frees us from the screen and leads us back into the real world. It enables new kinds of intelligent agents to operate on the same fundamental laws of nature that we do, to reason, learn, plan, and act. Like us, they use internal world models to make sense of their environment and adapt to it. Standardizing these models enables agents to communicate, to share, and collaborate, forming healthy distributed networks of shared intelligence. So which path do we want to take? The path that follows nature's blueprint and reminds us that we are not products of technology, but extensions of nature. It offers a way to align technology with society, with our fundamental humanity, our ethics, our values, our laws. We are only at the beginning of this path. We have achieved the breakthrough we believe leads to smarter, safer, and more sustainable general intelligence systems. This isn't just about achieving AGI. It's about what we can achieve with it. The natural path invites us to realign our relationship with technology, nature, and each other. And it calls on us to come together to imagine a smarter world and then build it.